Emmert International proudly presents the Rigging Job of the Year entry for the Specialized Carriers and Rigging Association. Emmert International was contacted by a power company to perform a feed water heater changeout during a scheduled outage at a nuclear power plant. This vessel was located in the main turbine building with a large overhead bridge crane. However, the clearance between the crane's upper hoist limit and the turbine operating floor was less than the overall length of the heater. Emmert International was asked to devise a method to remove the heater that would avoid having to cut the heater into sections. To compensate for the clearance restrictions, Emmert's engineers and riggers proposed rotating the units out of their vertical orientation as they were removed and replaced. The combination of lifting, rotating, and lowering the feed water heaters required the use of several custom components engineered and manufactured by Emmert International. To design the rigging components, Emmert analyzed the size and weight of the feed water heaters. The old feed water heater weighed 134,700 pounds and measured 40 feet 10 inches long with an 8 foot 8 inch diameter. The new feed water heater weighed 156,800 pounds and measured 38 feet 2 inches long with an 8 foot 8 inch diameter. Based on these dimensions, a plan was formulated for the changeout. The heater replacement was considered the critical path for the shutdown. First, prior to the outage, the new feed water heater was offloaded from a rail car utilizing the turbine building bridge crane. The building had two loading bays, but the bay with rail access was at the opposite end of the building from the bay adjacent to the existing heater. To move the new vessel, it was first lifted off the rail car. The rail car was pulled clear and a six-line, self-propelled Goldhofer platform trailer was positioned under the vessel. The crane then lowered the unit onto the deck of the platform trailer and it was secured for transportation. The new feed water heater was then maneuvered along plant access roads to a staging area near the end of the turbine building where the changeout would occur. After placing the new feed water heater on staging beams and staging stands, it was now time to prepare for the removal of the existing feed water heater. Inside the turbine building, an H section consisting of four W14 by 120 H beams was constructed on the top floor above the old unit. 150 ton D rings were positioned on the center portions of the H section directly above the lifting trunnions on the feed water heater. Slings were attached to the D-rings and then an engineered low head height spreader was attached to the slings. This spreader had two custom hydraulic lift cylinders attached on the ends and these in turn were secured with the slings to the upper lift trunnions on the vessel. This custom designed equipment was set up prior to the start of the outage to minimize downtime. Once the vessel had been isolated and tagged out, Emmert's personnel retracted the hydraulic lift cylinders, taking approximately 80% of the vessel's weight. The load supported by the cylinders was monitored through the hydraulic pressure gauges on an Emmert manufactured jack machine. This stabilized the vessel while the piping and support braces were cut loose. This also freed the main crane for other maintenance tasks in the building. Once the vessel was completely disconnected from all the piping and utilities, Emmert was ready to lift the unit from its existing position. Under the direction of Emmert's personnel, the overhead bridge crane was brought into position over the heater. This crane had a single trolley equipped with two separate hoists. The main hoist was rated at 225 tons. The auxiliary hoist was adjacent to the main hoist, spaced four feet away and rated at 50 tons. The main hoist hook was connected to the center pin of Emmert's spreader. The unit was first raised approximately five feet with the main hoist and the slings connecting the spreader to the floor H section and D rings were unshackled. The support beams were then slid to the side, providing full clearance at the floor access hole. The vessel was next raised approximately 30 feet until the lower support brackets were at floor height. The old vessel was not fabricated with lower trunnions, so Emmert had designed, built, and load tested a fixture that could easily be bolted to the support brackets on each side of the vessel. Two 22-foot, one and three-quarter inch wire rope slings were then placed on the auxiliary hoist and shackled to the lower support bracket fixtures. The main hoist was then raised to the full extent of its upper limit switch. 
The bottom of the vessel at this point was still 33 inches below the floor. Next, the auxiliary hoist was raised, and this tilted the heater approximately 25 degrees until floor clearance was achieved. Emmert's highly skilled riggers had laid out the exact geometry of the crane hoist lines, the angle of each hoist, and the position of the vessel to demonstrate to the satisfaction of plant management and the crane manufacturer that no interference between the trolley frame and lift cables would take place and no excessive loads would be applied to the crane. Additionally, the hydraulic lift cylinders were fully retracted to gain maximum height after the vessel was partially tilted and the spreader had cleared the knuckle of the elliptical dome. The vessel, now clear of the floor, could be carried by the bridge crane to the unloading bay. Upon reaching the unloading bay, the auxiliary hoist was lowered and the hydraulic lift cylinders extended until the unit was again in the vertical position. The auxiliary hoist was now disconnected from the vessel. A prefabricated laydown tool was positioned under the unit. Two pivot points had been built into the bottom lifting bracket fixtures and would be the main contact point as the unit was lowered onto the laydown tool. The pivot points were located two feet apart, straddling the vessel centerline. The pivot point further from the desired laydown direction was purposely placed two inches lower so that it contacted the laydown tool first and caused the vessel to tilt in a controlled manner. After positioning the base of the unit in the laydown tool, the six line was placed so the top of the unit would be positioned on the deck as the vessel rotated. The main crane hoist then traveled away from the laydown tool and began to lower the rigging attached to the spreader bar. This process continued until the unit was fully rotated into the horizontal position and supported by the laydown tool and the deck of the platform trailer. At this point, the spreader bar with its lifting cylinders were removed from the main hoist. In order to lift the unit and reposition it so that the entire feed water heater was supported by the Goldhofer trailer, the main crane hoist was re-rigged with lifting slings attached to the lifting trunnions and lift bracket. The overhead crane was now able to lift the vessel and transverse it into position on the platform trailer. The unit was then lowered onto staging beams that had been preset on the platform trailer deck. Upon securing the load, the self-propelled trailer transported the unit out of the turbine building and placed it on staging stands. It was now time to install the new feed water heater, which would occur utilizing the same methodology, only in a reverse fashion. The Goldhofer trailer was positioned under the new unit and elevated until the load was fully supported. The unit was lashed and transported into the loading bay. The overhead crane was then rigged to the new unit and it was lifted off the platform trailer. After placing the base of the new unit in a specifically designed turning tool manufactured by Emmert and the top of the unit on the platform trailer, the main crane was again re-rigged with the spreader bar and lifting cylinders. The new vessel was rotated into a vertical position and lifted to the upper hoist limit. The auxiliary hoist was then rigged to the lifting brackets at the base of the unit. Upon rigging the new feed water heater, it was rotated to 23 degrees from its vertical position and trolley to the installation point. Once the bottom end of the new heater was over the access hole, the auxiliary hoist was lowered and the unit centered in the hole, the auxiliary hoist rigging was removed. The vessel was then lowered until it was positioned on the base stand. The rigging below the D-rings and support beams were then reattached to the spreader in order to hold the vessel in position and the main crane hoist was removed. Final alignment of the new vessel with the existing piping required positioning the vessel within tolerances of 60 thousandths of an inch. By careful control of the hydraulic lift cylinders and positioning of the support beams, Emmert's personnel were able to locate the vessel to the customer's fit-up requirements. It took a skilled crew of four men over 30 hours to complete the X-ray quality piping welds. After the vessel was secured, Emmert was able to remove the rigging and lift cylinders from the top trunnions. The main crane hoist was used to dismantle the H section on the top floor section of the turbine building. Emmert International, utilizing existing equipment within the main turbine building, coupled with custom-engineered rigging components, was able to perform the change-out within exacting tolerances and ahead of schedule. Loss Prevention No accidents, no incidents, no injuries, no loss of time, no property damage, no equipment damage. Safety considerations. All work performed to the stringent safety standards of NRC, ABC, AGC, 
OSHA, and Emert safety guidelines. Work performed under Emert International safety policies for rigging, overhead and hydraulic loads, and trailer operation. Rigging and changeout steps reviewed by a task force involving utility management, engineering, and Emert operations. Utilization of radios and phonetic alphabet and three-step communication protocol to coordinate cranes and movement. 100% compliance with all fall arrest, operating equipment, and personnel protective equipment. Innovation and ingenuity. Rigging plan that eliminated the need to cut the old heater into sections for removal with limited overhead clearance. Use of hydraulic lift cylinders to support the heater so the crane was released for other outage work. Design of lifting brackets that provided a secure and easily attached rigging point to the vessel. Design of lay-down pivot points on the lifting bracket that ensured positive control of the vessel in the transition from vertical to horizontal. Site characteristics. Operations occurred within the protected area of a nuclear facility during heightened security. A single overhead bridge crane in the main turbine building. Heater installation required rotating the vessel 25 degrees to clear the operating floor. The old and new heaters varied in weight, size, and piping configuration. Completion schedule. Completed ahead of schedule and under budget. Execution. 550 man hours. Engineering and planning. 18 months of permit processing. 180 hours of engineering. 380 hours of planning and coordination. Physical characteristics. Old feed water heater. Length 40 feet 10 inches. Diameter 8 feet 8 inches. Gross weight 134,700 pounds. New feed water heater. Length 38 feet 2 inches. Diameter 8 feet 8 inches. Gross weight 156,800 pounds. Limitations. Restricted work area within the protected area of a nuclear facility. Overhead bridge crane hoist height was less than vessel length. Overhead bridge crane was equipped with a single trolley, main, auxiliary hoist configuration. Heater changeout was a critical path element of plant shutdown. Contract type, firm fixed, lump sum price.